Right now at 6 o'clock, for the first time today, we saw Virgilio Aguilar Mendez in the St. John's County courtroom. The 18-year-old is facing a manslaughter charge. Investigators blame him for the death of Sheriff's Deputy Sergeant Michael Kunovich. Sergeant Kunovich died in May. The trouble began when he reported a suspicious person, Aguilar Mendez, standing outside a closed business in St. Augustine. Yes, and Kunovich collapsed following a struggle with Aguilar Mendez, who speaks little English. The sergeant later died at the hospital. Earlier this week, the medical examiner released a report which concluded that Kunovich died of natural causes of cardiac dysrhythmia. News for Jack's reporter Marilyn Parker was inside the courtroom. And Marilyn, the judge acknowledged that he was entitled to a bond. Yes, and the state agreed with that acknowledgement because he's not charged with a capital felony. Now, why it took them seven months of Aguilar Mendez sitting in jail for them to reach that agreement is unclear. But even if he were let out, there is an immigration hold on him. So he would be taken into federal custody, making it a challenge to face the charges in this case. The question to the court. Is Virgilio Aguilar Mendez competent to stand trial? The 18-year-old from Guatemala is accused of manslaughter in the death of St. John's County Sheriff Deputy Michael Kunovich. All right. During a competency hearing Friday, psychologists describe Aguilar Mendez's thinking as concrete. He didn't know the names of the legal charges, and I explained what the names were, and I explained uh, what they were. Most important of the names is that he couldn't understand that it was being accused of, of manslaughter and that it was somebody died. They say he has a sixth grade level education, tends to answer yes no matter the question, gives inconsistent information, and has trouble retaining information. In addition, his primary language is called MAM, a dialect adopted from Spanish. Two defense witnesses believe Aguilar Mendez is intellectually disabled. The state's argument is shown in this report with transcripts from when Aguilar Mendez was questioned by detectives using a translator. Where do you think that argument stands? Because he was able to comprehend or respond with that detective efficiently through that long transcript. Well, we heard testimony today from two of the three experts and also representative from the Guatemalan Mayan uh, Center that there's cultural um, issues there. Um, that could be interrelated to his mental health issues where they seem to just agree and go along with everything um, because if they don't, it's a sign of disrespect. State also questioned Aguilar Mendez's best effort to understand what's going on. Their witness recommends he is competent to proceed even though he is unfamiliar with the U.S. legal system and performed poorly during their interviews. Get on the ground! But what was his level of competency during this interaction with Deputy Kunovich? Kunovich requested a Spanish-speaking deputy to assist him, but the situation still escalated. Is that applied at all when we think about the situation that got us here in the first place? Because if that was his incompetency now, or if that was his mental abilities now during the interviews, then what was his mind state like in the interaction with Kunovich? So we're talking about a victim of police brutality who not only did not understand English, but has mental health issues. And that's something that when the moment comes, um, the appropriate parties will have to respond and be held accountable. Now, taking in everything presented in court, the judge has to decide if Aguilar Mendez is competent to proceed. If the judge does not think he can proceed, the defense recommends he be sent to a forensic hospital where he could get competency training. If the judge decides he can proceed, the state wants him to remain in their custody, even though they acknowledge his language is an issue. But again, the problem is, if he's released, the federal government will detain him because of the immigration hold. Well then, Marilyn, what would happen if Aguilar Mendez is in fact granted bond? Well, his civil attorney tells me, considering the immigration hold, he would be turned over into federal custody. He would not be deported immediately and would still have to face the charges here. Aguilar Mendez was going through the immigration process before all of this happened. It's unclear where that process would stand after this case. Marilyn, thank you.